Hello and welcome back to Chattering Included, where today I shot myself in the foot. Metaphorically, of course. But before we get into that, I wanted to introduce this week's talking buddy. I mentioned a few videos ago that I was struggling with talking at my computer and feeling silly, and then I used a Psyduck plush and it did help. So I'm deciding to employ the rubber duck technique. I had to dig all the ducks out of my closet for this, but introducing Garflin. On to the usual subjects. Most of my pieces I just kind of make a face at and say, oh well, this isn't my best. But this? This one is legitimately my enemy. This took twice as long as it should have, for no reason. I can't pinpoint why I spent seven hours on this instead of three, but that drives me crazy. Because in my opinion, it is no better quality than anything else I've put out this month. Why did I spend so much time on this? See, initially I was working on something in particular, but as the pieces went on, that vision just kind of kept getting more and more lost. I went in knowing I was going to draw a fairy. But in my head, she was going to be one of those pretty elegant, dark fairies. As time went on, that just became further and further from the truth until she became a regular fantasy fairy just with some slight sass. And once I was done drawing and looking her over, I realized I could have done something different with the wings that I would have liked a lot more. And I just, ugh, this makes me so mad at myself. I spent a lot of time conceptualizing this one just for it to lose half of my concept and now I don't particularly like it. Regardless, I found a pose I liked, but as I lined I realized it looked wonky, so I walked away and came back and I still didn't like it so I thought well maybe if I like reline some of it it'll look better, but I was wrong. So her leg got hidden by the skirt and it still looks a little wonky. Honestly, I think the skirt was half of the problem. I'm not particularly skilled at drawing clothes, and I tend to go for skirts and dresses on characters that look thick and stiff instead of light and flowy, which you would think a fairy would have, but here we are. I went in thinking dark fairy, like the kind that had a weird chokehold on the early 2000s, the kind drawn by Micah Jelena and Jessica Galbraith. I actually had a notebook with a dark fairy on it. Very pretty, and I wish I still had it, but after much use and a lot of love, the design eventually got scraped away. But the fairy art was called The Mask of Autumn by Jessica Galbraith, so not featured in this video or the time that I spent working on this piece is the hour it took me to find a picture of that binder on Google just to smile at something vaguely nostalgic. As I was doing this, I realized in my memory that most of the dark fairies I'd seen were basic, pale, white with goth dark aesthetics, and even the ones I found trying to find the picture of my old notebook were pretty much the same. It was rare that there was a person of color depicted as a fairy, so I decided I wanted to deviate from that a little bit. But I am always worried about doing that. I never want anything I draw to come off as disrespectful, so I'm always a little nervous when it comes to picking skin tones or trying new hair textures or even trying different eye shapes. I want to add variation to my style and representation through my little art journey. I just don't want to draw something offensive on accident, you know? At this point, the only real gripe that I had was that she took seven hours to draw and that I had to hide her leg with skirt. That is not my main complaint, honestly. No, remember when I said I accidentally shot myself in the foot, metaphorically? That's because once I was done aligning this, with all of my time conceptualizing pushed aside, I made a split-second decision to challenge myself. Does anyone remember the three marker challenge that was going around all the traditional artists on YouTube for a while? Well, I thought something like that might be neat for digital artists, just having a random color palette picked for you. And I'm willing to bet that other people have done this, I just thought it would be fun to do. And surely coolers.co would give me something I could use, a nice tame muted color palette to go with what I was envisioning. At the very least, maybe a brown or a dark orange that I could layer? But no. No, I got this. 
I got this bright ass Lisa Frank esque abomination, which obliterated my dark fairy fantasies. I could have said no, I could have, but no, Bancha wanted a challenge. Remind me never to do that again. So I played with the color combinations and eventually settled on the Marge Simpson combo of blue hair, yellow skin, green dress. You might notice occasionally that a gray pops up and that's not part of my color palette. I don't think I've addressed this before, but basically once the lining is done, I select the outside of the canvas. So if I were to draw on the new selection, I could color the background without getting it into the central focus's outline. But if I invert that selection, I can color on the central focus area without getting it on the background. But if you color on the layer with the line art, obviously you're just going to cover the line art. So what I do is I create a new layer below the line art. Then I take a gray and color that entire section in. Sometimes I'll just use the fill tool. Sometimes I keep the selection on and sometimes I take it off, but I'll set that gray as a clipping layer, meaning that if my selection goes away, I can still lock the layers so that they don't color outside of that gray. So while the gray pops up, it's literally just there to get colored. I didn't get to use it for the picture. I did give you a black outline, but that gets changed at the end anyways. The only thing that I felt salvaged it in the least, that doesn't make me completely hate this, was that while I was challenging myself to use only those few colors, I gave myself the wiggle room of using different blending layers and methods. So I was able to put some blue on a multiply layer and change the opacity for shadows all over, which gave her yellowish skin a little more greenish look, but not so green as to blend in with her dress. Basically, changing the layers blending mode gave me a lot more variation of color within the colors I was given. It gave me darker colors and lighter tones that I was able to use for shading and highlights. Some people may think of that as cheating, but I live by the motto, work smarter, not harder. Do I always stick by that motto? No, because I'm a moron. But if you think of that as cheating and you wanna see me struggle to do this without changing the blending modes of the layers, uh, let me know in the comments and I guess I can take a whack at that. It'll probably be a mess, but that's pretty much all I am when it comes to my art stuff, so it wouldn't be too different. At the end of seven hours split between two days, you can really see how lazy I got with this background. Like, I'd planned it out, but uh, I was just so sick of it, and I was, I was tired, I wasn't liking it. You can specifically see the laziness in the little blobby dude that I copied and pasted into the background only to mostly cover with yellow and little glittering trails. Those were initially going to be more throughout, but as per usual, I was getting tired and just wanted this to be done. So I did what I did. I'm not apologetic. I hope I was able to bring her out of the Marge Simpson territory, at least a little with all the shading, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Would you give this challenge a try? Do you want to see me attempt without changing blending modes on the layers? Thanks always for joining me on a rambling and slightly more frustrated than usual artsy adventure. Make sure to check out the channel for more videos like this one. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to join me for future art adventures. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye